Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, my name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And guys, we do this each week right here, same time, same station. It is our goal to give you the information, the data, not the headlines, but the real data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, all the information that you need to go out there and make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And we will do it on a New Year's Eve even. We did it on Christmas Eve last week. Hey, speaking of that, I hope everybody had an amazing Christmas, amazing Hanukkah, whatever holiday that you celebrate. I know uh, it's the Kwanzaa time of the year as well. I hope you, you had a chance to spend it with the people that you loved and really, really enjoy everyone's company because, man, it is a mixed up crazy world out there. And any chance we get to be with the ones that we love, it's always, always appreciated and cherished. So I hope you had an amazing holiday weekend last weekend and you're geared up for a safe and enjoyable New Year's Eve. I know I am laying low. I do not like to participate in amateur hour, but uh, plus at my age, I'm usually asleep by about 11 o'clock anyway. I do my best to stay up and watch the ball drop, but those days are behind me. But uh, hey, Jen, happy weekend. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. That is Jen, my producer. She is standing by womaning the Anytime Hotline. If you've got questions or comments anytime during the show, you can call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. And Jen will get your questions on the air. If you prefer to send us an email, uh, go ahead and check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. And on the bottom of the page, there's an email icon. Hit that little icon and you can submit your questions to us that way. And Jen will read them on the air for you. But man, oh man, where did 2022 go? It has been a wild ride for us here at the Mr. Mortgage Show. Each week we are adding new stations to the network and we are super excited to be with you. I'd love for you to take a minute and shoot us a text or an email and let us know where you're listening from. I'm always excited to hear when we pick up new stations and add new listeners. And hey, if you're curious, if we can help you, I like to say, if you can hear my voice, we could be your choice. We are building out our national footprint and super excited to continue to meet new families and serve their mortgage needs. So if you need us for anything, that number 855-462-7292 rings here while we're in the studio, but that also pushes to my office during the week. So you can always get us there, but man, oh man, we have reached the end of another year and it is prediction time. And I always get a kick out of the forecast and the housing market predictions and the interest rate predictions. And it got me thinking about last year. And there were people who sat on the sidelines last year because of the predictions of either prices pulling back or interest rates, you know, remaining in the threes. And I want to share this with you because I pulled the data um, and I, I shared this at the beginning of the year and I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll pull that, I'll pull the show from the December of 2022 and I'll post it to the Facebook page and you can find the Facebook page at uh, mrmortgageradio.com. There's a link to the Facebook page. And while I'm thinking about that, we always post a lot of the data that we use each week in the show to that Facebook page. So check out mrmortgageradio.com. There's links to everything there, including the, the Facebook page where we dump all the data. But uh, last year, they were talking about interest rates in the threes. And I quoted many forecasts that said interest rates should stay around 3.3 to 3.5 and then settle back around three by the end of the year. Well, guess what? Wrong. Interest rates are closer to seven than three. And nobody saw that coming. Uh, the most aggressive forecast that I could find from last year was from Bankrate. And they published on January 3rd of 2022 that they thought rates would spike at 3.75% and pull back to three and a half. Now, I'm not poking fun at anybody, not poking holes in anybody. But what, the reason I'm sharing this is right now today, somebody is sitting there thinking to themselves, I really want to buy a house, but the headlines are telling me prices are going to come back down and the forecasts are telling me that interest rates are going to be in the fours or fives next year. 
And I just want you to be aware that somebody was sitting in that exact seat last year thinking interest rates were going to be in the low threes by the end of this year. And we know where they are. They're nowhere near that. And they made decisions based on forecasts. And that's a scary place to be, guys. I'm a big fan of using the data that's in front of us. So right now today, there's the opportunity to negotiate with sellers to either buy the interest rate down, lower the selling price, pay for some closing costs. Buyers have more buyers have more flex, more power in the deal right now than they they they've had in the last 2 years. And sellers are willing in most markets to negotiate. Now, you can negotiate a lower price or you could negotiate an interest rate buy down, but if you can get a, a rate bought down to somewhere in the fives, and you can afford the house at today's price, at today's payment, now might be the right time to make that move instead of waiting. Because what happens if prices continue to go up? What happens if interest rates continue to go up? We saw that little false blip downward when the CPI number was released earlier this month, and we talked about it last week on the show. I was very, very uh, nervous about everybody's rush to inflation is over, the Fed is going to start to ease policy in 2023 and rates are going to come back down. Guys, we had one report at 7.1% CPI and they had forecasted that number to be higher. So there was big celebration in the market, but we saw what happened the next day once the market digested the Fed's comments when the Fed raised 50 basis points and said there's more rate hikes to come. And because of that, the market reacted accordingly. And we've had upward pressure on interest rates ever since. So I, I just caution you when you're looking at forecasts, it's like re a crystal ball, tea leaves, you know, somebody interpreting dreams. There's so much uncertainty there that if you're planning your financial future and a big decision around buying a piece of real estate, look at the data that's right in front of you. And if it makes sense now, I encourage you to take that step because we've talked about it before. I got in the business back in 99 and I was actively running branches during the housing crash. And I can point to clients who bought at the peak of the peak of the peak in the Florida market and still own that property today. It's worth more than they paid. They got a ton of equity and some of them own the property free and clear. And they never paid a mortgage payment higher than they would have had to pay to rent. And that's another big equation. You're paying to live somewhere you might as well pay to live in your own house if you can afford to do it. Now, guys, I get it. It's not for everybody. It's not always the right time. There's no way that I'm advocating for everybody to rush out there and put themselves in a, in, in a position that they may not be ready for. What I am an advocate for is looking at the real data that's in front of you and not the tea leaves and the crystal ball readers in the, in the forecast, because we all know just based on the information I shared to open the show, how inaccurate they were last year. And it's highly likely that they're going to be inaccurate again this year because nobody's dealt with this data set before. We've never had inflation that was spurred by the economic policy of a global pandemic. And because of that, there's so many influences on the market that are causing the uncertainty that I just don't see a clear cut path to say interest rates are going to be five and a half percent next year because they may be five and a half percent. They may be seven and a half percent. They may be nine and a half percent. So that's why I encourage you now use some of the strategies that we talk about. Use the interest rate buy downs. Grab a great interest rate on a house that you love right now make it yours and start building equity. So I appreciate you letting me start the show with that little bit of a rant, but I always get a kick out of this time of year when all the soothsayers come out of the woodwork and start making predictions again, because it's pretty easy with the internet to look at last year's predictions and gauge somebody's success based on that. But anyway, guys, you hear the music, you know what that means? That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We're going to deep dive the data and take your questions. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, and I am going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you've got any friends or family or coworkers who are talking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me and my team. You can simply share the link, Mr. Mortgage Radio. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. I'd welcome the opportunity to help them any way we can. Now sit tight. On the other side of this break, we'll be back with the show. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. 
Here's another 5-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Our inflation and every day expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you heard the man. If you've got questions, you can call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. In Jen, my producer, is womaning that hotline. She'll get your questions on the air, 855-462-7292. Hey, and just for reference, that is called the Anytime Hotline because during the week, that rings through to my office. So one more time for the people in the back, 855-462-7292. Call or text that number. If you prefer to send us an email, check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and there's an email icon. If you click that, you can send us a question via email, and Jen will read it on the air for you. And speaking of questions, Jen, it looks like we've already got some questions over there. We have a lot of questions this week. The natives are definitely restless. The restless natives. I love it. I love it. Well, good. Let's dive right into some questions. What do we have? Ashley is asking, I'm a traveling nurse. Some of my income is a housing stipend. I'm being told my housing stipend doesn't count. Does this sound right? Hey, Ashley, that is a great, great question. And the traveling nurse income calculation is super challenging for a lot of people because it's very inconsistent. There's uh, variable hours, variable pay. You know this better than anybody. Some contracts pay significantly more than others and then a large portion of your pay can be stipends and per diem and because stipends and per diem are non-taxable and traditionally i guess let me let me rephrase that because stipends and per diems are traditionally non-taxable they're not considered income in the truest form now the guidelines around calculating housing or including housing stipends in uh, income calculations for traveling nur nurses can get a bit confusing. But to answer your question, I've seen it where an underwriter just draws a line in the sand and, and says a housing stipend can't be used as income. And I'm going to give you an example. We had a traveling nurse who was buying a piece of property down in Orlando, Florida, and she was on contract in Orlando and she chose to make that her residence. Well, that housing stipend was to pay for temporary housing, right? A hotel, an Airbnb, whatever the case may be. And I know you traveling nurses are super industrious and often will share a place so that you're reducing your monthly expenses and you can pocket a lot of that stipend. I get it. But in this case, that stipend was going to go away as soon as Orlando was now her home, now that it was her primary residence, because that stipend is designed to pay for temporary housing in that location. And in some instances, you still have an apartment 
or a mortgage in, in your, your primary city, whatever it was. So in this instance, because she was going to make Orlando her home, that stipend was going to go away. So the underwriter, there was no way they were going to consider that income. So I know it's super confusing. And my answer to your question is it sounds right in a lot of cases that they're not going to, they're not going to include that housing stipend, but uh, there's a lot of moving parts around that. And I would love to have a conversation with you off the air about it because I need to know a little bit more to give you the best um, possible answer. So I encourage you to give us a call or send us it. Actually, you know what? We've got your contact information. I'll just shoot you a, a quick text and see if we can't set a call up when we get off the air. And maybe maybe I can get a better understanding of it and give you uh, a better answer. But I appreciate that question. And man, we see a lot of traveling nurses now. And I don't know if that was always a thing or if the pandemic made that very popular because there were certain areas of the country that there were a shortage of nurses. So they were paying a premium to bring nurses in. So I'd be curious, uh, and I'm going to ask you that when we talk, I'd be curious to know if that was always a career path that you had your, your eyes on, or if that was something that the uh, pandemic made available to you. So great, great question. And I hope that helped. I look forward to uh, having a, a deeper conversation about that. But uh, hey, Jen, do we have another question? Jackie sent this one in. We want to keep our current house and rent it out when we buy our new house. I remember you mentioning there is a calculation for what we'll need to charge for rent. Can you explain that again? Thanks. Hey, that is a brilliant, brilliant question. So oftentimes people do exactly what you're doing, especially now because a lot of people have such a ridiculously low interest rate on their current house and you may not need, need all of the equity to go buy a new property. So you keep the house you have, you got a load of equity in it in a ridiculously low payment so renting it out for positive cash is easy. I get that. That's a brilliant, brilliant strategy. And you'll never own a rental property with an interest rate in the you know twos or threes. So if that's where your current mortgage is, congratulations. That's an amazing, uh, an amazing move. Now, to answer your question, typically 75% of the rental income is what's used in the calculation uh, to offset your debt. It's called debt offset uh, from your departing residence. And I know that's a lot of confusing mumbo jumbo, but 75% is the, is the number that you're looking for to answer your question. So I know, again, this property probably exists only in fantasy land, but let's assume your mortgage payment, principal interest, taxes, and insurance is uh, $750 a month. If you rented that property for $1,000 a month, that $750 a, a month for your, your mortgage payment will not be included in the debt to income ratio on your new purchase. So make sure that if you take 75% of the rental income, you can use that to offset the, the debt. It's called income offset on your departing residence is the term that we use behind the scenes. But to answer your question, it's 75% of the rental amount is what you can be, what can be used as income. Sorry about that stammer. Uh, what's also interesting is let's say you rent it for $1,500 a month, whatever the surplus is over that 75% can be used as income to help you qualify for the new property. So now there are certain circumstances and certain guidelines where that does and doesn't apply. So you're going to need to have a slightly deeper conversation about it. Do you hear me talk about it all the time? Look past the ob obstacles to find the opportunities. Here's a perfect example of somebody who's finding the opportunity. What an amazing time that we're in with escalated rents and low interest rates on most people's current primary homes to turn that into a rental property. I just think it's one more example of an opportunity in this market. So Super excited for you. Congratulations on being in the position to make that move without needing to sell the property. But um, I'm hoping that helps. If you need more information around that, just give me a call or shoot me a text. And guys, that's another reason why that landlord loan is so popular when you're buying investment property is that 75% calculation doesn't come into play with the landlord loan. You can buy an investment property with, to use that fantasy land example again, a $750 rent versus a $750 mortgage payment. And that's considered cash flow neutral. 
that 75% equation doesn't come into play with the landlord loan when you're making a purchase. So I hope that helps. If you need more info, you know how to get us. But you hear the music, you know what that means. That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of the break. We'll be back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we'll take more of your questions. Let me tell you a little story about a man named Jed. Well, actually, this is a story about Mary, not Jed. Mary is an awesome single mom who's been raising her daughter in the same one-bedroom apartment for the last 11 years. That's right, one bedroom. They've got bunk beds in there, and they've made the best of it. Her daughter's now a teenager, getting ready to start high school. The bedroom is a challenge, but more importantly, sharing that one bath is getting tough. So she decided to take the plunge and become a homeowner. We got her approved with an FHA loan. That's right, I said it, FHA loan. If you're agents telling you that FHA or VA loans are not being accepted right now because you're talking to the wrong agent. Give me a call and I'll get you in touch with a really great agent. Back to the story. She took the plunge and she is now the proud homeowner. They each have their own bedroom and more importantly, their own bathroom. Super excited for Mary and her daughter. If you want to learn more, check us out online at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com or call us at 855-462-7292. My name is Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are tuned into the Mr. Mortgage Show. And friends, we do this each week right here, same time, same station. I am joined, as always, by my lovely producer, Jen. She is womaning the Anytime Hotline. That number is 855-462-7292. You can call or text that number, 855-462-7292. Call or text the Anytime Hotline. She'll get your questions on the air. If you prefer to do it via email, just go to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. You'll see the email icon click that and you'll be able to submit your questions via email and Jen will get those on the air for you one more time. That's 855-462-7292. But guys, we do this each week. It's our goal to bring you the data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, man, not the headlines, but the real stuff. So you can make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And guys, we've already had some great questions. Uh, We just talked about the traveling nurse income and how challenging that can be because a big portion of that Uh, pay sometimes is stipends and per diems. And that becomes a challenge in trying to calculate that into income. So great, great stuff. If you missed any of that, you can double back and catch the replay at mrmortgageradio.com. There's a link on top of the page to the podcast in the previous shows, but uh, let's keep your questions rolling. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Joseph wants to know, how does buying a lower interest rate work? Is it a one-time fee? Hey, Joseph, that's a great question. And yes, it's a one-time fee. So you pay what's what's called a, a discount point or discount points to buy the rate down. And that's paid at closing. And depending on what interest rate you're buying it down to dictates how many points you pay. A point is 1% of the loan amount. So on a $300,000 loan, one point is $3,000. And you can lower your interest rate by paying those discount points up front. It's paid one time. And in the case of a permanent buy down, that rate starts and stays the same at whatever rate you purchased it down to. And what's super exciting is right now, sellers are negotiating again. So if you can get the seller to buy your rate down, 
it's a great opportunity. And we're seeing it almost every week now, a contract come through where a seller contribution is moving an interest rate down almost a full percentage point. So if you've got a rate somewhere, you're being quoted somewhere around, so let's say six and a half percent, let's just pick a, a, a number right in the middle of the pack. And the seller will contribute enough money to buy that down to five and a half percent. That's an awesome opportunity. But I appreciate that question, Joseph. I hope that helps. The discount points are paid up front one time at closing and the rate starts and stays at that lower number. So brilliant, brilliant question. Thanks for that. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Here's a text from Paul. Is there any penalty for paying off a reverse mortgage? I mean, what if we decide to sell later and downsize? Thanks. We love your show. (laughs) Thanks for that, Paul. We love that you listen. Um, Another brilliant question. And let me throw this out there. You can always check out more about reverse.com. If you've got questions, more about reverse.com. There's a little explainer video and then a, a little link where you can request some more information. And guys, be gentle. That's me on the video. <laughs> I'm much more comfortable behind the mic uh, than in front of the camera, but that's me. I try to answer some of the most common misconceptions and then give you op- an opportunity to request a bunch of free information. But more about reverse.com. I figured I'd plug that while we're talking about reverse mortgages. Hey, to answer your question, no, there's no penalty to to pay off a reverse mortgage, uh, quote unquote, early, if you will. The one thing that you want to, uh, I guess, let me elaborate. So let's say you take a reverse mortgage now and down the road, you decide it's time to downsize or you want to move closer to the kids or whatever the case may be. You can sell the property and it's just like a normal mortgage. You pay whatever the mortgage balance is. You pay that off at closing if you were to sell it. And then you, you would take any of the proceeds if there was additional equity left. No penalty for doing that. No pe- penalty for paying it off early. No penalty for refinancing it. We saw a lot of people in this you know, pandemic spike in appreciation take advantage of all this newfound equity and refinance their reverse mortgages. So to answer your question, there is no penalty for paying it off early. Now, what I want to caution you, though, is dig into what your timeline is, right? So if you're planning on paying that reverse mortgage off in, like, let's say, two years, Let's say, you know, your fixed income and the cost of living, inflation, everything is just, it's making it difficult and it's not uncommon. There's a lot of people in that position and you want to get a reverse mortgage to get you through the next two years, three years, whatever the, the, the case is. And then you're going to sell to go be closer to the kids. Make sure that you recoup the cost of that reverse mortgage in that window of, of time because there are fees on the front of a, a reverse mortgage that make the break-even point from the monthly savings, just be mindful of how much the reverse mortgage is costing you on the front end and make sure you're going to see the benefits of it in that time window. Because oftentimes if your window is short, you know, two years, 18 months, I had a client recently who was planning on selling in just under two years to go be closer to her children it made no sense for her. She wasn't going to recoup the costs of, in her case, it made more sense to go get an equity line, have the equity line in case of an emergency, and then just be mindful of her spending to get through the next couple of years because she was never going to recoup the cost of the mortgage in that short period of time. So just be mindful of that. If you want some help with how to calculate that and to dig deep, I'm always, always open to a conversation. You guys, if you listen to the show, you know what a place in my heart the reverse mortgage holds. It's not for everybody, but for the right person, it can be life-changing. So I just encourage you to, to do that break-even analysis, and I'm happy to help you with that. But great, great question. I appreciate that. And to answer it, no penalties for paying that off early. Hey, Jen, can we squeeze in another question? David is asking, everyone is saying rates are coming down next year. If that is the case, wouldn't it make more sense to pay a lower price than ask the seller to buy down the interest rate? The rate buy down makes sense, but I'm just wondering if a lower price now and a refinance later makes more sense. Wow, that is a great question. Yeah, a refi later makes more sense to your mortgage guy because he's gonna he's gonna do two transactions for the price of one. Um, I'm not so sure that makes sense though, brother. Let me walk you through it. So let's say you have the opportunity to buy a $400,000 house and let's say you can negotiate that sales price down to 385, right? A $15,000 savings. And let's say you're going to put 10% down. So on the $385,000 equation, right? You just take the lower price as you mentioned, and you're going to refi it later. 
and you put 38.5 down, right? 10%, whatever your closing costs are. I don't know. We're just using round numbers for this conversation. And you take an interest rate of say six and a half, six and three quarters, whatever the rate of the day is. Do the math what that monthly payment's going to look like and then take a $400,000 loan or a $400,000 purchase price and the 10% down is 40 grand, right? So now you have a loan amount of 360 and use the interest rate of, let me do this real quick in my head. Uh, let's say three quarters or seven eighths of a percent lower than the six and a half or six and three quarters and use that monthly payment. And I think you're going to find that the monthly payment is significant enough that it makes sense to take that lower rate now, pay $15,000 more, right? And it's arguable if it's more or not because the seller's giving you $15,000 towards your closing costs. So it's really a push, although I get it, right? The recorded sales price is $400,000 in that example. Um, look at the monthly savings because I think you'll find you move the needle significantly by buying the rate down in comparison with lowering the purchase price. And I think you'll find that it makes sense to do that. And that's not even taking into consideration what happens if rates don't go down from here. And we just talked about how far off the forecasts were last year and what happens if prices keep appreciating or remain flat. There's just way too much uncertainty in that equation for me to be comfortable. So my gut just tells me, take the lower rate and don't look back, but that's me. And don't forget that the refinance isn't free. There's another set of closing costs that have to factor in too. But hey, great question. I hope that helps. But you hear the music. You know what that means. That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We'll be back with more of the show. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, and I am going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you've got any friends or family or coworkers who are talking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me and my team. You can simply share the link, Mr. Mortgage Radio. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. I'd welcome the opportunity to help them any way we can. Now sit tight. On the other side of this break, we'll be back with the show. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this, it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes, I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are tuned into your very favorite real estate and mortgage show of all time. <laughs> Guys, I'm hoping that we're becoming your favorite real estate mortgage show because it is mine for sure. I've never had so much fun, and it's been an amazing year. Uh, man, this year flew by. Uh, this this has been an amazing opportunity. We keep adding new stations each week. We truly feel blessed. We appreciate your participation, your comments, your questions. We couldn't do the show without you. We j I just want to say thanks. I hope everybody's had an amazing 2022. I know it's been challenging. I hope you're ready to embrace 2023. Uh, I'd love to be a part of it. Your questions, your comments, your emails, 
they mean so so very much to us and uh, we just we just appreciate and honor honor the time that we get to spend with you each week but uh, hey if you have questions or comments you know you can call or text 855 855- 462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. 855-462-7292. And Jen is standing by, womaning the hotline. She'll get your questions on the air. If you prefer to do it via email, just check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. There you'll find a ton of information. There's links to everything. Uh, we post all the data that we use each week to the Facebook page, and you'll see a link to that. But on the very bottom of that page, there's a little email icon. If you click that, you can type your questions there, hit submit, and Jen will get them and read them on the air for you. But man, again, I just want to say thanks. We've had some brilliant questions so far today. Um, We've talked about a lot of good stuff. If you missed any of the show and you want to hear the replay, there's a link to that too at MrMortgageRadio.com. That top link will take you to the podcast. And uh, Jen posts the replay version of the show to the podcast page each week. And we do a lot of bonus content. We had some requests for some FHA content last week. And uh, we're going to do our best to get that up here once we get through this holiday weekend. But hey, and speaking of that, man, oh man, be safe tonight, guys. I know I'm one of those old farts that'll be asleep on the couch by 11. But if you're out and about celebrating and tipping the bottle, uh, call Uber. Be safe because we want you with us next week. We really appreciate you being here. We want you here for the kickoff show of 2023 next week. Anyway, let's keep your questions rolling. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Marnie sent this text. Does the 100% first-time buyer program you talked about work in South Carolina? Hey, Marnie, that's a great question. Uh, Yes, ma'am, it does work in South Carolina. And if anybody out there is curious what Marnie's talking about, last week I dove deep on that uh, 100% FHA program that's available now. And what it is, it's a first mortgage, a traditional FHA loan at 96.5%, but there's a forgivable 3.5% grant that lays on top of it to get you to 100% loan to value, which is awesome. And another cool thing is the seller can contribute up to 6% under FHA guidelines. So if you factor in a hundred percent loan plus a 6% contribution, you're, you're getting into that property for little to no money out of pocket. So great question, Marnie. Yes, ma'am. It does work in South Carolina. And if you need more info about that, we would be happy, happy, happy to help. But thanks for that. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Adam is asking, We moved to Littleton about 14 months ago. We both have good jobs. I've heard we need to wait two years. Is this still the rule? Our landlord is selling and we like to buy our place if possible. Hey, that's a great question. And are we talking about Littleton, Colorado? Because if we are, ooh, baby, it's cold outside, right? My uh, youngest sister is, uh, is out near neck of the woods and sent us back some amazing photographs during Christmas and we FaceTime and she took us through a walk downtown downtown in in her city and my god it was beautiful all the snow covered trees and man it looked like a gingerbread gingerbread cottages as far as the eye could see but beautiful beautiful part of the country uh, but hey back to your question so it's interesting cuz a lot of people get hung up on that they hear that 2 year work history um, as an underwriting guideline now if you had positions in similar fields before you moved, let's say you're the pharmacist at CVS or Rite Aid or what, you know, Walgreens, whatever the local pharmacy is, and you transferred in and now you're the pharmacist of your local drugstore. Well, guess what? You have all the work history you need, assuming there wasn't a long employment gap. And you said we, so whatever your partner's previous employment was, if they transferred in or just moved in and got a job in a similar industry in a similar role, You don't have to wait two years in that specific job, in that specific city. So we saw that during the pandemic. We did a ton of mortgages for people that were moving to Florida. They hadn't even set foot in Florida yet. And they had a um, employment offer letter and the HR department confirmed their start date. And believe it or not, people were buying property sight unseen over the Internet coming down to Florida and then closing on their property and starting work the next week. So that two year work history gets a lot of people confused. So I'd like to encourage you to explore your opportunities now because it sounds like you've got the employment history that you need. And there are certain circumstances where you only need 12 months of employment history, even if you started scratch in a new position. So Yeah, it's always worth a conversation, and um, it's often confusing when we're just talking about 
general guidelines. So I hope that helped. I'm of the mind that you're probably okay to get started now. And if you'd like a conversation about that, you know you can contact us, 855-462-7292, and we'll deep dive it and see if we can't help you figure it out. But brilliant question, and I just want to say thanks for that. Hey, Jen, do we have time for another question? Courtney sent this text. My divorce has been final for a little over three years, but my previous mortgage is still on my credit report. My ex pays it. Can I get a mortgage on a new home for myself? Hey, Courtney, that is a brilliant, brilliant question. And guys, we see this happen all the time. And if you've listened to the show and we've talked about divorce, you know that I'm a huge advocate of if you own a property together and one person is going to keep the property, do your very, very best to get the debt in that person's name. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes the wife, if she was the homemaker or you know, we're, we're seeing roles reversed in our society a little bit. But traditionally, it's the wife, if she was the homemaker and she didn't have employment history, right? We just talked about the two-year rule, then she might not have been able to get a mortgage in her own name. And then in that case, it sounds like the roles were reversed because it sounds like the husband got the house and he's now required to pay it. So that is a brilliant, brilliant question. Now, here, here's the thing. If you can prove that he's paying it and that it's been paid on time, right? So let's let's just make that assumption that it's showing on your credit in good standing and your ex-husband is making that payment timely. That's wonderful because it hasn't negatively impacted your credit. Now, in order to get that off your debt to income ratio, because on paper, that's still your responsibility, we need to show that he's made that mortgage payment for at least the last 12 months. Now, you said your divorce has been final for almost three years, so I'm assuming that he's been making that mortgage payment timely for the last, you know, almost three years. So we're going to need, or your lender, I'm hoping it's us, but whoever it is, is going to need to establish that your ex is making that payment. So the divorce decree, the settlement, the MSA, the, the marital settlement agreement should have um, made it his responsibility to pay that mortgage. Now, he's going to need to provide documentation that he is paying it. So it can be canceled checks, 12 months bank statement showing that auto withdrawal to pay that mortgage each month. Assuming that it's been paid on time for the last 12 months and you can document that, that's what you're going to need to show the underwriter who's underwriting your mortgage application that you're not responsible for that debt anymore. Now, I'm going to encourage you to, as quickly as possible, have him refinance that home into his name solely. What happens if he misses a payment? Guess whose credit that's affecting? Yours, if that mortgage is still on your credit report. Now, guys, I've, I've even seen people stop paying to spite their ex. There's risk associated with leaving the debt in both person's name, and that happens a lot in the case of divorce. So just be mindful that that could be a challenge down the road. Hopefully everybody is on good terms and he's willing to document the fact that he's been making that payment for the last 12 months and able to document it. If that's the case, you should be okay. But brilliant, brilliant question. I'm always available if you want more information. You know you can contact us anytime during the week at 855 462 7292 or as always check out mr mortgage radio.com uh, mr mortgage radio.com but you hear the music you know what that means my god we've come to the end of another week of the mr mortgage show and the end of 2022 where did the show go where did the year go man we've had a blast with you say bye jen goodbye jen have a great week <laughs> have a great week sorry about that I, I had you muffled but uh, jen says goodbye have an amazing week we'll see you back here next week same time same station if you need us you know how to reach us mr mortgage radio.com that's mr mortgage radio.com have an amazing week that's a wrap join mark i tell next week for more thrilling Edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.